the history of the internet. By Billy Stevenson and Aaron Snell. A brief look into the history of the internet. Join us over the following slides as we take a brief look into the history of the internet. And I use the term brief very loosely. <sighs> it's going to be a long day. In the beginning, from 1969 to 1971. For the first time ever on October 29, 1969, computers at Stanford and UCLA connected and were the first hosts on what will later be known as the Internet. In 1970, an ARPANET network was established between Harvard, MIT, and BBN. EMA was first developed in 1971 by Ray Tomlinson. Project Gutenberg was also started in 1971. If you didn't know, the Gutenberg Project was a global effort to make books and documents in the public domain available electronically for free. ARPANET made its first transatlantic connection in 1973 with the University College of London. The Proposal In 1974, a proposal was published to link ARPA-like networks together into a so-called internetwork. The proposal was also a 2009 romantic comedy film starring Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds. Of course, this information has nothing to do with the topic, but just trying to make jokes here birth of the PC. The first PC is developed in 1977 by Dennis Hayes and Dale Hetherington. During the same year, email accounted for 75% of all ARPANET network activity. 1978 was the first unsolicited commercial email message, later known as spam. Yes, I definitely mean that kind of spam. Ugh, stupid game. MUD, the first multiplayer game. 1979, MUD was the earliest form of multiplayer games. The MUDs were entirely text-based virtual worlds. This is how a typical login screen for one of the MUDs would look. Switch over to TCP slash IP. January 1st, 1983 was the deadline for ARPANET computers to switch over to the TCP slash IP protocols developed by Venting Kerf. Only a few hundred computers were affected by the switch. Domain Name System, DNS. The Domain Name System was created in 1984 along with the first domain name servers, which is also DNS. The Internet Grows. There were nearly 30,000 hosts on the Internet in 1987. The first kind of title is that? Yeah, never mind. 1991, first web page created. 1991, again, first content-based search port protocol. 1991, again, the first webcam. 1993, Mosaic, first graphical web browser for the general public. 1993, governments join in on the fun. 1994, Netscape Navigator. 1995, commercialization of the internet. 1996, First web-based webmail service, Hotmail. 1998, first news story to be broken online instead of traditional media. 1998, Google! 1998, internet-based file sharing gets its roots with Napster. The bubble bursts. 2000 was the year of the dot-com collapse, resulting in huge losses for legions of investors. Hundreds of companies closed, some of which had never turned a profit for th their investors. Honestly, I blame Y2K for this. How the Internet Works Oh, this is a mouthful. The Internet is a worldwide network of computers linked together by telephone wires, satellite links, and other means. Most computers on the Internet can be divided into two categories, servers and browsers. Servers are where most of the information on the Internet is stored. Browsers are what people use to access the World Wide Web from any standard computer. When you connect your computer to the internet, you go through an internet service provider. An internet service provider's job is to provide the link between your browser and the rest of the internet. Services provided by the internet. News, entertainment, weather conditions, shopping, mail, and the list pretty much goes on. World Wide Web and Intranets. The World Wide Web is a system of interlinked hypertext documents accessed via the internet. 
And now before we get to internets, some more info on the World Wide Web. World Wide Web. The proposal for the World Wide Web was brought about in 1989. The code for the World Wide Web was written by Tim Berners-Lee in 1990. Intranets. An intranet is a private space, while the internet is an open public space. Intranets can be accessed from the internet, but are private and password protected. An intranet is held within members of an organization, while an extranet is shared with certain outside parties of that organization without full access. Mime and Pop 3 No, not the Pope, I said Pop 3! A POP3 server listens on well-known port 110. Encrypted communication for POP3 is either requested after protocol initiation using the STLS command, if supported, or by POP3S, which connects to the server using transport layer, security, TLS, or secure sockets layer, SSL, on well-known TCP port 995. The original POP3 specification supported only an encrypted user slash pass login mechanism or Barkley.ROS access control. POP3 currently supports several authentication methods to provide varying levels of protection against illegitimate access to a user's email. Most are provided by the POP3 extension mechanisms. POP3 clients support SASL authentication methods via the AUTH extension. MIT Project Athena also produced a Kerberized version. MIME Multipurpose Internet Mail Extensions An internet standard that extends the format of email to support text in character sets other than ASCII, non-text attachments, message bodies with multiple parts, header information and non-ASCII character sets. MIME's use has grown beyond describing the content of email to describe content type in general, including for the web, and as a storage for rich content in some commercial products. Well, these are my final remarks. I hope the slideshow wasn't too boring, and I hope my stupid jokes didn't get it too annoying. But most of all, I hope you learned something about the history of the internet.